The prophecy has come true. Attack on Titan. Final, final, final season. Part one. I don't think Aaron's coming back safely. I don't think Aaron's coming back. I think he's gone. But it doesn't mean he can't have some kind of, I don't know, I don't know, some kind of redemption. Emotional redemption? Character redemption? Where to even begin? Chapter 1, The Rumbling. Oh my god. I can't believe this is happening. I don't know if there's going to be any world left to run to. It's so horrible. There's nowhere to run. I can't imagine just the absolute panic of watching the Colossal Titans march on the continent. Attack on Titan, the final season for that one before. Coming back to Attack on Titan is always such a thrill because it feels like war. And I don't mean the show, I mean just like ideologically. I, I maintain that it's the most important show, one of the most important pieces of media in, in the modern era. Evidence of that fact, I think, is how polarizing of a character Eren is and how many people just want him to annihilate everything that he could perceive as an enemy. I mean, a lot of reactions I see to Eren are less conscientious and sympathetic than Eren, who's clearly struggling with this. The fact that he even considered wiping out Paradise instead is pretty fascinating, because obviously all of this is devastating for him as a person, because he's not inhuman. He's not solely a monster. He's a kid fighting for survival. He's been someone who was trapped for most of his life, watching people be annihilated around him, feeling powerless to stop it. But there's two things I don't really buy about Eren's dilemma. One is the inevitability of it. I mean, I know it seems like a lot of this was set in stone. He set the events of his own life in motion to a certain extent, but the choice had to have happened somewhere. Eren made the choice somewhere along the timeline. I don't think it's a closed loop. If it is a closed loop, nothing matters anyway, and there's no character stakes at all. The other is this calculus he seems to be doing about what would be the greater good. And one thing to consider about that is the fact that this Titan war is not about the Titans. That was my issue with Zeke's plan as well. Eliminating the Titans doesn't end the evils of humanity. This is at root a problem of the capacity of humans for evil. And to that end, the answer to me is not to try to take any one sweeping action to try to end evil, because evil will inevitably rear its ugly head again, infinitely over the course of human existence. It's to not be the evil. That's the only solution. For everyone to not be the evil, to not commit evil towards a goal, is the only way that things ever change. And I think that's one of the major themes of the show. I think that's what some of the other characters, Aaron's opposition, have reached as a conclusion. Some of the biggest moments of the show come as a payoff at the end in, in these final, final, final seasons where characters make different choices finally. You know, they finally have the agency, and the freedom to take the hard route, the route where they're not participating in the evil that has been perpetrated against them. I think I'll never win this battle. I think it's too seductive. My only solace is like <laughs> the fact that I think the show is there as well. And we'll see how these final seasons, final episodes play out. And maybe with time, you know, maybe with time, that's how they'll be remembered. Is that the... Oh, we've just seen him. One guy's a lot friendlier than the other. They're all beating up children. Aaron's just working on a different scale right now, though. <laughs> yeah. Right, different levels. What is this boy's life comparison? He still did it though. <laughs> now he well, now he sees. Now he knows. It's really hard to measure the difficulty of Aaron's like past, present, and future dilemma. It's hard to say what trying means in this case, trying to change things. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, they're gonna get trampled too. I oh, just told him, he just dumped out all his shame on this kid. It's a lonely life. He's got no one, or he feels that way. Forget the money. <laughs> 
人類が生きているとしてこれはがっかりした This is also familiar for Eren, also a parallel. I remember distinctly the days when Eren was going to destroy every last Titan. That flipped real 180 there. Oh, yeah, it's Attack on Titan. It's been a while. Oh, that's crazy. I wonder, I, I wonder, will this change anyone's mind? Is this what people want? I think it's it's pretty easy to, you know, root against the Marlians who are in control and the soldiers and everything. This is exactly what the Paradisians experienced that led to people supporting Eren. And I know people will say that, well, Marley struck first. The kids didn't. Kids had nothing to do with it. Eren, for me, is, is also a sympathetic character. Don't get me wrong. But being understandable and being sympathetic doesn't make you right. And it doesn't make me root for you, if that makes sense. Like, I think it's possible to understand someone and love them and not agree with them. In fact, I think part of loving someone often calls for opposing them. On another note, I, I love that shot of her as the angel of death in Aaron's eye. It's so unbelievably terrifying, beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen a show that hits the height of mass scale tragedy like this one. It's so ab absurdly tragic. <laughs> They're looting? Okay, that's on you. Oh, not the horses. Oh man, and the steam! I forgot that they're colossal titans. It's the slowest car. I guess it's old days, old timey cars. What was the point? You should just run. <laughs> they're not shying away from it. There he is. What do you even do if you're the crew? I mean, you're not fighting the Colossal Titans. You're going after Eren, right? You gotta like land on Eren or something. Are you free yet, Eren? It's painful that Eren's journey is one into less freedom, despite his stated aims. He gets less and less free. He's like trapped by time himself. Time itself. Is it? <laughs> is this? Is it, Eren? You did it. Whoops. Aaron was talking to him. Oh, it's kind of a relief to get out of that that scene. It's gut wrenching. You bet he does. <laughs> He's been waiting for this for so long, waiting for four seasons while you were trapped in hard crystal. Aaron's gonna rock like himself. Ooh. Big man Armin over here with the confession. He just skipped like three seasons of Love is War and went right to it. And that's not wrong. And Armin just is a great guy. It's multiple things at once. He also loves you. Loves you. He's really going for it. <laughs> I guess there's no point waiting, right? Speaking of scales. No, they did not. At the same time, it was always there. They've already seen it, because it's not about the physical location. In a show about freedom, it's pretty hard to say what freedom is, but I think it's become crystallized what it isn't. And it's not necessarily the boundaries that constrain you to where you live. It's not even necessarily power. Like I said, Eren to me, I mean, he definitely is free to enact his will, but out of all the characters, he seems the most trapped somehow. I think there's something powerful about the fact that the characters on this boat, in this crew, have removed themselves from this causal path of destruction, basically risking it all, risking everything, freeing themselves from a lot of their past in 
order to do what they feel is right. It's like they're the most conscious in a sense. They're the most awake. Aaron is kind of like a victim watching his own dreams, you know, something inside him screaming to get off this ride, but he's basically just in a straight line with no deviation. And like I said, that's a plot device, so it's hard to know exactly what that means. But I have to believe the show's making a statement about freedom with this comparison. And they've all witnessed beauty. They've all tasted the best things in life, the things that are the most valuable. In the midst of this terrible world, and despite this terrible world in which they find themselves, I think one of the biggest things of that nature, most important for Armin, was his friendship with Eren. <laughs> I have such big hopes for Hanji, man. Erwin's successor, doubting herself. It's not just them three. The two female titans on the same dock. Big doubt. You're coming. Yes, you are. It's a fight for another day. She read that really well. And she's not going to find peace just sitting here. If I have to read through the lines about what Mikasa's thinking, I think there might be some similarities between her and a certain green-haired character in another show I'm watching, where above everything else they would like to save the person that's the threat, but haven't totally ruled out the use of what might be inevitable. It's a big redemption that can happen for Levi, too. I mean, she made a deal with the devil and paid for it. That's a no from me. Wow, surprised. That, admittedly, is legitimate. Nobody really knew what to do. That's maybe Eren's strongest point of argument. I mean, he basically begged Hanji for something. But yeah, it was not euthanasia. This crew also is representative of the hope for humanity. The fact that they all, or most of them, were enemies at one point. Here have a common goal that transcends global politics. I remember when I hated her. <laughs> I hated her stupid card titan form. Oh, man, I hate to see Levi this way, though I'm happy he's alive. <laughs> what a badass line. I expect nothing less from Levi, though. You're coming. Such a long time coming, this conversation. Hard for me to imagine them actually staying put. I'm putting a very cheerful face on this mission. It's not one that you would expect to come back from. She will. Highly doubt that's her arc, just because she sat in a crystal for four seasons just to come out and leave, I doubt it. And the fact that she's safeguarding the kids who are supposedly going to sit it out, also just skeptical. That's a battle for another day. If there's any silver lining in this whatsoever, it's the fact that the path is clear. <sighs> Still Hanji. Glad to see her. Her old self come out a little bit. 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they just have a clear target where they were lost for so long, and that target is is Aaron, stopping Aaron. There's some strength in that. Erwin would be proud. That's all that matters to me. Oh my god, he's alive! See, a water death isn't a real death. Flish flash! I feel. Well, I was happy to see him for two seconds. Oh, flush. <laughs> Committed to the end. Okay. This is going to be a close one. How do you know? Ugh, sad arc for Flock. Oh. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Speaking of talking like Erwin. Oh my god, and this has been prophesied. It's always been Armin. Oof, what a legacy to uphold. Yeah, it's a good choice. <laughs> Made even more crazy by the fact that they chose Armin over Erwin. Levi's been through this before. Here we are again. Oh! <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better. It's just talking about Hanji's redemption. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't want her to die. At least she's enjoying herself. Oh, man, everyone would be so proud. They're, they're, oh man. I'm so overwhelmed by this. They're honoring legacy of the past or hope for the future Erwin is a part of that legacy and this is her technology too right oh damn <laughs> amazing yeah this team I was wondering how she's gonna get around that literally on fire oh damn it She worried about her worth and value as Ern's successor. Damn it, I'm with them. Say goodbye to another comrade. But I feel exactly the way about her death I felt about Erwin's death. It's really sad, but it's not tragic because she, in her final moment, she became everything that she was supposed to be. I was just saying in another reaction that's coming out soon to a different show, that sometimes there's a salvation in death, but it's not the death itself. It's the actions leading to death. It's doing what's right no matter no matter the cost. Watching her, I see Hanji as this beautiful character who... <laughs> it's so amazing because I remember not liking her at first. I remember when she was first introduced, I found her off-putting, and here I am crying for her. That's Attack on Titan for you. But also watching her, I see Erwin, and I see his philosophy. You know, I see the, the idea of you fight to honor those who came before you and for those who will come after you. That's There's no more distinct, clear way way to see that than with Hanji's sacrifice. What a journey the show has been. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> She's alive. She's alive. Oh my god. <sighs> oh no, she's not alive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even without this scene, I was, I felt his presence. But damn, is it good to see his face. Hmm. <laughs> 